You're listening to Linux News Log, separating the Linux and open source signal from the noise. Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian, coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California, here in Studio MC2 at QuickSurf Internet Studios. Linux News Log is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there. I'd like to encourage everybody to visit us online over at quicksurf.com. If you're uh, watching us from YouTube, uh, please do uh, like the video. It shows that uh, you appreciate what we're doing, and also do subscribe to the show. Um, It is linked up here above uh, me um, if you're watching this on YouTube. Alternatively, you can also visit us on the web and subscribe to the show using your podcatcher of choice. All the links are in the show notes for every episode. You can just visit us online at quicksurf.com and find us that way. Let's go ahead and get into the stories for this episode. Over at Engadget, uh, they have a nice article entitled How to Set Up Your Raspberry Pi to Play Atari 2600 Games. So for those of you who are uh, big Atari... 2600 fans or you just want to have a a nice relatively easy way uh, to play Atari 2600 games on your TV uh, the Raspberry Pi is an alternative way to do that Um, this uh, has a a really great walkthrough on how to do it Um, check it out if that's something you're into doing and if not then don't over at Slackware.com, I noticed that uh, they have released Slackware 14.0. Pretty nice. If you're a Slackware user, by all means, go check it out. You can now get it, and it is available for download. Over at the Open Web OS uh, website, it's over at uh, OpenWebOSProject.org, they have, uh, in their blog, announced that Open Web OS 1.0 is now available. Um, you can uh, suck it down. It's a, basically it's an open embedded build that allows a full WebOS experience running inside an OE emulator. They've added core applications, email, and browser while continuing to support the desktop build environment. Um, they've also added support for NO2, um, which is kind of nice. And um, they've added over 75 open WebOS components which is more than 450,000 lines of code, at least according to the blog post what that they have here. Um, the blog post has a nice YouTube video of every, uh, basically a walkthrough, pretty cool. By all means, check it out if OpenWebOS is something you're looking to do. From the Valve Software Linux blog, uh, they have uh, posted a new blog post here um, that they will be starting a private external beta for 1,000 users sometime in October. So. Steam for Linux is happening. It's uh, going to be starting uh, private beta here in the very near future, and uh, pretty exciting stuff. From GNOME's website over at gnome.org, uh, they've posted a new blog posting, and well, it's actually in their news section, but uh, GNOME 3.6 has been released. Pretty nice. Uh, highlights for the release include big improvements to notifications, including a redesigned message tray, smarter notifications, and other tweaks and refinements, uh, enhanced activities overview with an improved layout, greatly enhanced files application with functional file search, a new recent location, redesigned interface, and lots of bug fixes and handy new features, um, integrated input sources, which makes inputting different character sets fast and easy. Um, They've added accessibility on demand, meaning that universal access features like the Orca screen reader can be enabled with the push of a button. That's huge. Uh, And a new lock screen, which provides an attractive view when the device is locked, plus handy functionality like media controls and notifications. So pretty interesting. I mean, there's more to it than that. They've got the full on uh, rundown of everything. Um, You know, if you're a GNOME user, this is something definitely you want to take a look at. While I was looking for news uh, for this episode, I ran across a story about a Hackberry A10 dev board being available, and um, I I tracked it down to the the company that uh, is is basically pushing this. Miniand.com is the website, and basically the Hackberry A10 dev board is designed to be a competitor to the Raspberry Pi. Now, the cool thing about this is... 
where the Raspberry Pi is pretty nice. This isn't as cheap as the Raspberry Pi, but it's got more power. For example, it's got uh, a 1.2 gigahertz ARM Cortex processor in it. It's got a uh, little, little more connectivity, serial port, you know, Ethernet and Wi-Fi. Um, the CPU is a 1.2 gigahertz all winter A10 ARM Cortex A8. Uh, the GPU is a Mali 400 with hardware 3D acceleration and hardware video decoding. The, it's got a serial port, an audio input is a three and a half millimeter microphone jack. Um, the audio output is audio over HDMI. It's got four USB 2.0 ports, uh, four gigs of NAND storage with one and a half gigs available with a user partition in Android. Um, you can add uh, an SDHC card to it. It's got a SDHC card slot, supports cards up to 32 gigs. Uh, 10 100 Ethernet with 802.11n Wi Fi. The RAM uh, is DDR3. You can get 512 megs or a gigabyte. Um, 100 of those megabytes is reserved for the GPU. You can boot from the SD card and internal storage via U boot. Um, and the OS support is Android 4.0 ICS and Linux. And the digital video out is HDMI up to 1080p. You do have to supply a cable. And there's also an analog video out, which is a three and a half millimeter composite AV uh, and a three and a half millimeter component uh, output. The power is a NEMA two pin power adapter. Uh, basically, you can feed it AC 100 to 240 volts and it outputs five volts DC. So pretty interesting. Um, Definitely check it out. If if you want something that's got a little more power than the Raspberry Pi, this is is potentially a good alternative. It caught my eye because I was like, oh, wow, this is pretty cool. Um, you can buy it. Let's see how much it costs. Uh, the 512 meg RAM one is $60, and the 1 gig RAM one is $65. So not bad. It's more expensive than the $35 Raspberry Pi, but you get a little more performance. So, you know, something definitely to take into consideration. That'll do it for this episode of Linux News Log. As always, everything I've talked about is linked up in the show notes. Just visit us online, quicksurf.com. Please do like the video and uh, subscribe if you have not already done so. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. I'll see you then. Bye.